Hi, this is Aliani Mejia, Heart Rhythm TV. Uh, and I'm here from the inside the EP lab, literally inside the EP lab with two uh, great mentors and professors, uh, Dr. Kamala Tamarisa and Dr. Marsun Rasminia. And we are following this part two, following the episode of the importance of women in EP, the, the limitation that we have focusing mainly on radiation exposure and also pregnancy throughout our practice and, and what are these limitations. So we want to share some solution. And that's why we have Dr. Rasminia with us to talk about zero ablation procedures to go step by step what are the options we have so we can continue working so before we, we have, have before we have dr rosmania may i ask you how many months um pregnant are you eliani well i'm six months and a half and i'm very very happy and actually i'm being able to combine what I love. And, and we keep doing procedures using ice, using the 3D mapping system, using the right protection devices uh, uh, when we do radiation procedure for devices specifically. Uh, but for ablations, we can do serofluoros. So this is what I want to highlight. And and I'm more than happy and honored to have in this segment with us, Dr. Rasminia. So welcome back, Dr. Rasminia. Can you just, uh, how do you think that fluoroless catheter ablation procedure has helped women in EP specifically? And when we are trying to combine our life, like family planning with our procedures. So tell, sure. take us. Eli yeah, Eliani and Kamala, thank you so very much for the invite. This is an honor and a real pleasure to be among you folks. Uh, you know, I, I I hear you and I completely agree with you to 100%. Um, um, you know, the radiation reduction technique has been on its prime time. We know for a fact that almost over 90, 95%, I mean, unless it is an epicardial or cases with congenital or uh, some other cases that some people prefer to use radiation. Majority of cases now, we can certainly perform with no use of no radiation. Of course, you always want to have your, you know, fluoro available in case because we know that there, for everybody who does a procedure, there are going to be complications. We always say a physician with no complication is a physician who doesn't do any procedure. So if you are going to have a pericardial effusion, you're going to need and you're going to have that fluoro immediately available, you're gonna have your lead stuff available. But interestingly enough, one thing I just wanna mention that uh, because uh, if you are very familiar with the use of ice, you would even be able to see the smallest amount of effusion in the heart without even, even if you have an A-line, without even having A-line changes. So you are already in advance, way in advance to bring your fluoro, to get the lead on, to start preparing as opposed to even relying on the uh, A-line. But having said that, uh, because of that, I really, uh, when I hear that, unfortunately, there are not many uh, female physician, female cardiologists that are not applying for electrophysiology, I say, I wish we could get the word out. I mm -hmm. wish they could just listen to Eliani and find out that Eliani is six and a half month pregnant and she does her procedures with no lead, she just does her ablation procedures. She's not gonna have the a heavy 20 lead, you know, a probably pound heavy head apron while pregnant. And, for and, doing, and of course, if she's gonna need it for devices, she still does the procedure with extra protection with those leg apron. But I'm so glad that we have this discussion. And I hope that, you know, our cardiology fellows or even for that matter residents, they, would be able to listen to us, just see that how really it can be done. Yes. It can okay. be done. You guys can come to the like, majority of when I when I performing the procedure that I'm doing now for 13 years, uh, we haven't I haven't used radiation. But usually when they CRNAs, I have CRNAs female, majority of them are female CRNAs. When they are really actually they are pregnant, they assign those CRNAs to my lab. So because they know that they can go there and sit and they don't need to be worried about as opposed to, uh, let's say, go to the ortho or other places that they have to use x-ray. So they are very happy to come to the lab. 
So it seems that this is a great action that has already been proven. Uh, you did your first completely through less ablation procedure in 2010. So that's uh, so why we don't go step by step. I know you have amazing images, so let's go through them so we can show actually our audience how we can how we can actually do it. So it's all on thank you. you so much. Yes, I'm going to be sharing my screen and I'm going to. Actually, this is the one I'm going to show you. This is, we are going to talk about zero fluoroscopy is here to stay. And it is going to be use of uh, ice and more. Uh, but again, I want you guys to remember, this is, I have a abstract of like about 10, 11 minutes out of a five hour movie. So the entire uh, videos are either on Twitter or uh, published books and stuff. Everybody can really be able to have uh, access to these, but a, uh, I wanna go and just give a, you know, just a taste of how we can do this procedure safely and effectively. Here we go. So uh, these are my disclosures. What should we rely more on ice and mapping as opposed to x-ray? There are many reasons behind that. This is a patient who had undergone an accessory pathway ablation many, many years ago. And this is a lesion that he had after uh, fluoro. And this is a hand of an orthopedic surgeon after uh, 20 years of radiation exposure uh, using fluoroscopy. And of course, we all know that we are gonna wear that, you know, heavy, heavy lead apron. We may end up having knee pain, back pain, hip pain, and so forth. So let me just introduce you a little bit to this intracardiac echo. So imagine that this is a handle of the echo. You can do anterior, posterior, you can do right and left. So you can also do clockwise. You can do counterclockwise rotation. You're gonna be able to advance it. You're gonna be able to withdraw it. So if I give you, this is eight maneuvers that I can do with ice, correct? So if with these eight maneuvers, I really give them a musical note for each maneuver, you can really play a symphony with this ice. Literally a symphony. This is the best symphony that you can play using ice because you can do a lot of things with it. As opposed to using x-ray, you may have another type of symphony, which is a little bit different than your ice symphony. So the ice goes, usually I put it, place it from the left groin. It, you always wanna see the, uh, you know, echo free space in front of it. You're gonna go towards the um, uh, right atrium. Here, I'm gonna give you an example of flooded ablation. You can appreciate this is a, CTI TV junction here. You can appreciate this is a CTI and IVC junction. So what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to bring my ablation catheter and from here, I just make a ablation from here to here and done. So that is a right atrium, that's a right ventricle. And you can appreciate the ablation catheter very gently coming back slowly. Of course, uh, um, here you can see that we can, we use the mapping system. With the mapping yeah. system, this is okay. what, when, I can appreciate the edema that you have created on the lesions that is exactly, very exactly. So, especially you can see those edemas, especially when you are doing a, you know, uh, in the ventricle in the LV, you can see, especially if you would be able to see that tissue with the eyes. Absolutely, thank you. And then with the mapping, you would be able to see your catheter anytime as it is going up. And this is a map that I perform. A uh, you know, few months ago, you can appreciate here as you see right atrium, right ventricle RVOT, that's a pulmonary artery. You can appreciate left pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery, and you can rotate this and you can appreciate the CS, left atrium, left inferior pulmonary vein, left superior pulmonary vein, left pulmonary artery. And very nicely here, you can see the proximity of the right pulmonary artery and the right superior uh, pulmonary vein. Here, you can appreciate that this is my mapping catheter coming and going into the, from the right, uh, from the left pulmonary artery going to the right pulmonary artery. And remember, very close to the right pulmonary artery, it is the left upper pulmonary vein. You can see here what we have. This is a right pulmonary artery. My ice is here, and this is my mapping catheter inside the right pulmonary artery. And now we are in the right pulmonary artery. On the other side, what do we have, right? superior pulmonary vein. So we always see this catheter here, but I'm showing you the catheter in the pulmonary artery. So you can see the proximity again, as opposed to having this catheter inside the right superior pulmonary artery vein, you see that in the pulmonary artery. 
How about, let's just give an example of transeptal puncture in 2023. This has been, for many years, we have been able to do it as simple as this, but here you can appreciate that this is a transeptal wire, which is also, you can deliver radio frequency. And as it is going into the SVC, I can map it. I would be able to see it on my mapping system that I have already created. So that is the tip of the needle, which is at this time a wire, which is going to be act like a needle. So I keep the wire here, right there. And then I go with an advanced sheet and dilator over this wire as to the SVC. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to pull back the wire. We are going to see the first. We are going to see the second indicator. As soon as we see the third indicator on this side, the other side, the wire has become, is acting like a needle. How? Because I'm pulling it back to see the third indicator. And the moment I see the third indicator on the other side, I just stop. When you stop, this is going to be your uh, wire that has, is acting like a needle. You can appreciate that. Let's take a look at it. Now, I'm going to be able to pull it down towards the fossil valis. And remember, I'm seeing it on ice and the mapping system. And we are going to deliver the radio frequency application. We are going to advance the wire inside the left atrium. Here, you can appreciate we just delivered radio frequency. This wire is going to the left atrium. I can put it in the left atrial appendage. It's a big wire. It's a looping. It's a pigtail wire. Advances the sheet and dilator. And just go ahead and pull back the dilator and the wire, keeping the sheet inside the left atrium here. Let's take a look at it one more time. To the fossa, the wire is going into the, uh, uh, close to the, in the inside the left atrium for that matter, advancing the sheet and dilator over this, and then pulling the dilator as well as the, uh, you know, wire out, leaving the sheet. But let's take a look at it on the ice. This is the tip of the dilator, correct? So I'm pulling back, this wire, this is, I'm using here a Versa cross pigtail wire. As I'm pulling it back, you see that it is getting untwisted. And now you can appreciate this is the tip of the wire, which is acting like a needle because I'm seeing the third indicator. And you can appreciate right here. As I'm pulling it back, I'm pulling the ice and the transeptor back together. Myself, one with right hand, one with left hand. And I'm looking at it as it is dropping into the fossa. So I can see it. And now, of course, I have a luxury of being able to see the same thing on the mapping system. And this is the very needle as it is coming. Remember, this is a traumatic. It is not a real needle. It is soft, blunt tip. And you're bringing towards the fossa ovalis. And just go ahead and perform radio frequency. And you can appreciate that this pigtail wire is just going into the left atrium. So I'm inside the left atrium, advancing the sheet and dilator. I'm pulling back. Actually, I'm doing this slow motion here. You can see to show it how it is coming back. Otherwise, you can even do probably this transeptal uh, much faster than what you see. But then when we do the transeptal, you can appreciate the mapping catheter is going to the left atrium. So here you can see that the mapping catheter is where? It's in the left atrial appendage. So I can see that I'm, I'm having a guy who has atrial tachycardia. I'm doing the activation map. I'm doing the voltage map. I'm doing the, getting the geometry and everything. And here you can appreciate that, uh, you know, I'm still inside the left atrial appendage. You can see the aorta right there. Here you can appreciate, this is the left upper pulmonary vein. This is my mapping catheter. And this is left superior pulmonary vein. I just advance it into the left superior pulmonary vein, I would be able to get to see the vein. And remember, this ice right now is inside the left atrium. And there is, of course, I have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, presentation on that, that how you would be able to advance the ice inside the left atrium. And I believe that majority of the electrophysiologists who perform this procedure, this kind, they know how to place it inside the left atrium. It's really very easy to do it. So now we are advancing the inside the left inferior pulmonary vein. I just go ahead and I just want to stop it for one second. 
if this is a right inferior, I'm gonna go to the right inferior from my vein, correct? But one thing that I wanna show you is the sinus. This is like a transfer sinus. This is a surrogate for me to make sure if the patient, if you, majority of them, we always have like 50 cc. We know that this is physiologic. But while I'm doing this for a seizure, I'm keeping an eye on this. So if this guy is getting a little bit en engorged and a little bit enlarged, I immediately, if I'm inside the left atrium, I put my eyes inside the left ventricle, look at the pericardial space. If my eyes is inside the right atrium, I put in the right ventricle, look at the pericardial space, because this is going to get engorged, which means that you probably have uh, some pericardial effusion. So it is very, you know, practical to be able to pay attention to so many things, not just one thing. And here you can appreciate this is the right inferior pulmonary vein. I'm advancing into the right inferior pulmonary vein. Here you can see that this is my mapping catheter. This is HD grid here I'm using, going inside the right inferior pulmonary vein. I do posterior part of it, anterior part of it. And here you see that I'm inside the right inferior pulmonary vein. And there, here, you can appreciate this is right superior. Why is it right superior? Because you see that pulmonary artery that I had shown you before. At that time, the mapping grid was inside the left, right, uh, uh, the right superior, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery. Now we are in the right superior pulmonary vein. And now if I want to do the rest of it, imagine I'm making a candy cane U curve and like a paintbrush, I'm releasing the curve. So I'm doing the entire, you know, coming towards the posterior wall, coming towards the septum, I can do that and release the curve. And here my eyes is of course inside the right atrium because I can see the septum in front of it. And you can get such a beautiful image, just imagine that you can see such a slow motion that you can even put a snail there and you see the slow motion of that snail going there because it, it creates such a great geometry for you. And you can just go down and perform a you know, couple lesions there and you can see that atrial tachycardia could terminate. It really makes your life easier. It adds a lot of things. It doesn't take anything from you. And this is interesting. This is the case. This is Emily. This is about 12 years ago. Emily was my nurse and she's 10 months pregnant here. Uh, sorry, not 10 months. I'm so sorry, nine months pregnant. What does that say? So mm -hmm. you see, the patient is very happy because we are not using x-ray. My nurse is very happy. Emily and baby, baby is very happy. Emily was happy and I'm happy there. I'm just waving to you guys to show that, you know, this is like about 12 years ago. And Emily, while she was pregnant, she was in the lab and was working without any, uh, you know, having any concern. And with that, I would like, again, thank you so much. And I really invite a lot of more, more uh, female colleagues to cardiac EP because it is really, fun to, you know, work in, um, it is really fun to work in EP, especially at this stage that we don't even uh, use radiation for this procedure. So this is, this is great just to highlight and, and thank you for showing us those beautiful pictures because this is exactly what eyes is. I, I always said I need my eyes actually to be able to see and just to have accurate information because the, the way that you show how the, the, uh, uh, the, you can touch the tissue and you can get an accurate map and you can actually see it and see what you're doing and go through the whole cases using your eyes, add more to the case and more data to the case. And also for us and for the whole staff, uh, we are more comfortable. And and uh, Kamala, you, you've been also using eyes. You've been also a woman. You also have kids. Uh, tell us your experience using these technologies and, and just to highlight how doable this is for us. No, it's very doable. You know, when I trained, I trained with uh, fluoroscopy and then, uh, you know, and then slowly dove in into ICE and it's very user friendly. ICE is very user friendly. You don't need, you know, you just, uh, whoever wants to set up a zero fluoroscopy lab, I think the most important thing is to train yourself in ICE 
get used to it. And the key point that Dr. Rasminia, you know, mentioned is don't step on floral. It's an, it's always an, you know, we are just used to stepping on the pedal. So don't step on the pedal. And with ice, pretty much you can do everything, um, you know, other than some of the congenital devices. Uh, I do, you know, congenital venoplasties and lead placements. But for those, obviously, I do use radiation. And then the other um, innovation and the growth in the field, Eliani, is, as you know, is the 3D mapping. It has grown so much. I mean, there's nothing we can't see. The contact force has made it much easier. Integration of the ice with the mapping, like Biosense Webster's, you know, Carto sound mapping system, and uh, you can easily integrate those. And I know the images Dr. Rasminia showed are different you know, Abbott um, inside, but, you know, nevertheless, whichever mapping system you're using, um, combination of ice, preventing just uh, stopping yourself from stepping on floral when not needed, and be very intentional from the get-go um, and make it a habit. It just has to become a habit. And then one last point I'll touch on this, if you're doing venoplasties and uh, high-risk congenital devices and you're pregnant and using radiation for those, obviously, um, you know, the points that Iliani mentioned are very important. Double lead, have the radiation badge, talk to the radiation physicist and uh, keep an eye on those. Thyroid collars, um, lead goggles, and um, these, uh, and the, you know, um, minimize as much as you can. Uh, the distance always matters. Cine frames, don't use cine just blindly. Keep your frame rate very low. I always keep it very low you know, the lowest possible. Um, and then, uh, so that is important. And the gap between the camera and the patient, again, limited. And be mindful. I think that's, uh, but it's absolutely doable. We are all great examples for that. Um, you know, EP is a wonderful field. Radiation should not be a barrier for anyone who wants to do EP, for sure. Well, thank you, Kamala. Uh, Dr. Rasminia, any closing statement for those women in EP out there? Uh, how to continue working inside on the EP lag and being an electrophysiologist? Any sure, thoughts? Absolutely. As I mentioned, I just want to give some, a, 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 make some additional comment to what just uh, Kamala mentioned is that, uh, you know, um, we, we also have in our lab, of course, majority of this X ray machine could be even old, but you can even really play with them. Talk to your you know, radiation tech or somebody in the hospital from the, you know, physicist. And then basically it is so simple to be able to adjust your radiation. As you mentioned, please do not do cine if you don't need it. Majority of them, they can just save the 50, last 15 seconds for you. But the most interesting part is that I, the other day, you know, we used to always put, okay, how many minutes of fluoro? which really doesn't make sense. You should not ever report your how many minutes of fluoro is, it is. You have to report how many milligray of fluoro you have used. Because in the past, I, I, I was looking at one of our you know, cases that of course the interventional cardiologists, they have to cine and one minute of fluoro could be several, maybe even hundred if you that cine milligray. But then I did a pacemaker last week and I was looking at that. I couldn't even believe that, honest to God. It was 1.9 uh, minutes of fluoroscopy, and it was one milligray, just one milligray, 1.9 minutes of fluoroscopy. So you can say 1.9 minutes of fluoroscopy doesn't mean anything. Is it 150 milligray? Is it one milligray? So pay attention to those. Then you know. Then you're going to be even much comfortable if you're going to do a by V, which is difficult, and you say that, oh my God, I have used a lot of radiation. But again, if you look at that, you see that maybe you have used 20 minutes of radiation, but you have just maybe done, who knows, 20 milligray. It is nothing, 25 milligray. So you are more comfortable. And this is, of course, we talk about ourselves, we talk about the staff, but at the very same and most important reason is our patients, that we do not really expose them to that much of radiation either. Especially, remember, you're bringing a patient with AFib, they come, they probably, they have a persistent and they come for another one. This is, you know, or devices or for that matter, even for interventional, you're gonna do angioplan, angioplasty and understand. So we expose this patient. So it is very, very important to be cognizant of the fact that really to avoid that, be really careful how much radiation you're using. 
So, well, thank you so much. This is an amazing panel. I think that we discuss in very detail the pros uh, and barriers that we face as a woman in electrophysiology, focusing mainly in radiation. Thank you so much for uh, your words of wisdom and expertise in the area. So this is inside the EP lab, and we have learned that it's possible, it's doable. We just have to be mindful, and we just be conscious about the radiation. And we, in the last decade, we have amazing tools, 3D mapping system, and ICE that has helped uh, for us to continue uh, to do procedures throughout our lives. So thank you so much. It's been an honor to have you. And this is inside the EP lab for Harvard TV. See you next time. Mm -hmm.